Well, with Slipknot announcing that they have a brand new album for us here towards the end of 2022, the end so far, I figured I'd let you guys know what I'm expecting from the album and what I hope to see from the album. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. My name's Ray, I'm a guitar player here on YouTube, but above all, I'm a music fan and Slipknot has been my favorite band of all time ever since I first discovered them, God, you know, forever ago. Um, so today I figured I'd do some old school content. For those of you who are longtime viewers, you guys know that Slipknot has been heavily documented and, and uh, you know, discussed on this channel. So I figured I'd just sit down today, talk about the new album and just talk about just like, as a fan, as a lifelong fan, if I could have a best case scenario, what I personally would want to see and or hear from the album. Goes without saying, these are just my opinions and this is just more or less a hypothetical, you know, one fan's opinion. You know, if I could just make the album that I personally want, you know, this is all this video is. But at the end of the day, if everything that I say in this video that I want, if the album is completely different, that's cool too. Um, you know, this is all in good fun and just, you know, speculation, all right? So I've compiled a list and some talking points for this video, so let's just start right now. The first thing that I want to hear from the album is some guitar solos. The band started out with zero guitar solos in the new metal era where like, you know, shredding wasn't really a thing. And then slowly but surely more and more guitar solos started to get incorporated into the band's music with Volume 3, All Hope Is Gone, and um, Point 5. And then they kind of went away from guitar solos in the last album, We Are Not Your Kind. So I kind of want a more of We Are Not Your Kind, you know, vibe with guitar solos. Now, as a fan of music, I don't mind a guitar solo every once in a while, and I welcome some really good ones. But there was just a point in, in like the mid to late 2000s with a band where like it was just kind of the same solo over and over in the same formula, especially in All Hope Is Gone and Point Five. They kind of like blurred that line where like the solos were kind of the same. And while I love, you know, a lot of those songs on those two albums, you know, that version of the band of Slipknot, we've kind of already gotten. So I don't want it to turn into like a, a hard rock shred, you know, album and or band. I kind of like the weird trippiness and the weird sample, you know, kind of chaotic elements of the first couple albums. So I want that to be incorporated in this new album. I'm not saying no guitar solos, just some sparing guitar solos. And with the last song that they just released, The Dying Song, there's some nice leads in there and some nice tasteful leads where it's just not a whole bunch of shredding. So not a whole bunch of shredding, some tasteful guitar solos. That's what I hope to hear. Another thing I want to be used sparingly in the album is the staccato type of delivery Corey Taylor does, especially in the verses and especially with his growl vocals. I'm starting to see a little bit of a pattern just as a fan where like the, the vocal delivery is very like, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a that, da 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 It's very like kind of almost like kind of the same again kind of rhythmic pattern of just like staccato delivery of lines and I, I don't want that to become a, a trope of the band. A good way to kind of compare what I'm talking about here is take the verses from the negative one. Da 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 very staccato rhythmic vocal delivery. And then now you take the same kind of vocal line as like the uh, the Chapel Town rag. I don't have the lyrics exactly, but it's like a lot of da 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 da. It's a very kind of similar rhythmic pattern. So I just don't want it to become the common vocal delivery. And uh, based on some of the things that they said about this album, I'm not too worried about it. I just want to make sure it doesn't become a common thing. Which is a nice segue talking about the things that have been said about this album. The band has spoke about this album saying that it's like the most like uh, experimental and kind of out there album. And if that's how they're going to sell it and if they're going to say like it's going to be a really weird different album, they're even talking about like the heaviest blues song of all time in this album, on this album. If that's the case, man, I welcome it. Go for it. I think, you know, if you're going to market it as being weird, be weird, man. Be be experimental. Go for it. You know what I mean? I know a lot of fans are expecting a certain type of sound and an old school sound and a nostalgic sound, which we'll get to here in a second. But man, I, I, I just say like, if you're gonna make a weird album, make a weird album. You know, you can be heavy and experimental, but also be good at the same time. Um, I, would, I would welcome a more experimental, kind of heavy, trippy album, as opposed to just say another carbon copy of like an All Hope Is Gone or a Volume 3, which is just more kind of hard rock, heavy rock oriented. If it's gonna be weird, be weird. And at its core, Slipknot started out as like an incredibly weird band to begin with. So, you know, embrace it, man. Let's let's welcome it. Let's see how weird we can get. You know what I mean? Speaking of the nostalgic sound, the next thing I want to talk about is I personally do not want a carbon copy of the Iowa sound. You know, fans for a long time have been wanting the Iowa sound, the Iowa level of heaviness. And that's been marketed 
and, and been talked about with previous albums and previous releases. And every time that somebody says, oh, it's IO levels of heavy, it does nothing but kind of set expectations and ultimately makes people expect it a certain way. And more often than not, they'll never like newer things will never live up to old school nostalgic expectations like it'll always fail it always get close but never quite be you know what was popular and cool in 2001 for example so i personally don't want to see like a a retread or a, a try to recreate you know that vibe because that is such a, a a time capsule for the band and and slipknot was such an entirely different entity and beast and being as a band back in the day so to try to re kind of create that in 2022 i think would feel rather forced and contrived and it would just come off as borderline you know corny and or fake regardless i don't think the band's going to do that at all because they've been saying how just different this album's going to be so i welcome the different i don't want the old school vibe i don't want to retread of what's already out there um yeah i just want it to be an organic representation of the band as a whole in present day whatever that entails and last but not least what i want from this album is a just an awesome definitive concrete landmark song on the album that defies the uh era of the band you take the first album for example you got sick and wait and bleed and eyeless those are like the big three in my opinion and i guess maybe surfacing too um iowa you got people equal you got left behind you got disaster piece you got my plague for example Volume 3, you got Duality and Before I Forget and Vermilion. After Volume 3, in my opinion, like, there were some landmark songs like Psychosocial um, and, and Dead Memories, and then uh, Point 5 has some in there, but, you know, I think with We Are Not Your Kind especially, um, Unsainted was, like, the big song, and then Solway Firth, and then Nero Forte. In my opinion, they just didn't have that, like, huge, impactful anthem type of sound type of song unsaints that i think would be the closest to that but it just wasn't like as big as like a duality or something like that um so i'm just looking for just like a huge epic sound a huge epic song and so far with the chapel town chapel town rag and the dying song i don't think we're quite there yet i'm just like waiting for like this just awesome huge song that is just awesome for me personally whatever that is just a nice landmark song of like yeah this song is the best one definitively on the album and it just sets the tone for the whole era so i'm just waiting for that i think we'll get it i'm just you know hoping that it just does something for me personally as a fan so above all everybody that's pretty much it that's what i'm looking for and expecting from the album like i said man i'll just say one more time you know these are just one man's just you know hypothetical opinions and you're always subject to criticism when you put yourself out there publicly on the internet so i totally get it but like I said, if the album is completely opposite of everything I just named, I'm totally cool with it too, man. And I'll still support it and love it all the same. This is all in good fun, man. So with that being said, everybody, those are my opinions and my wishes and my wants from the new album. What do you guys think of my list and my thoughts? Felt good to sit down and do some old school stay metal rag content. You know what I mean? It's been a long time since we did something like this. And it feels good, you know, to get back in like the 2019 vibes. Anyway, man, what do you guys think of my list and my thoughts and opinions? Leave your thoughts down below and I'll meet you down below in the comments. I love Slipknot, my favorite band of all time. And I think you guys know that. So anyway, man, I hope I can have a nice civil cordial conversation down below in the comments. I'm out of here. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay metal. I'll see you guys next time. Later.